Special. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Praise Yah. Hallelujah for you all joining us today. May the Most High continue to richly bless you on this Shabbat. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Then we're going to dive into the scriptures and where we're going to. We, we finna eat today. I'm hungry. Some of y'all some, some ate yesterday good. You know, on Thanksgiving. What's that Friday? Thursday. Yeah, I hope your stomach hurt. <laughs> eating, eating food, sacrifice the idols. I'm just playing with you. Hallelujah. Well, you, but you, but you were. Uh, I hope your stomach not hurt. But if you, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, That's true. then you did violate the scripture. Okay. You, you ate some food that was sacrificed to idols. Mm -hmm. Even if you was at home, so you saying you were thankful for you know your mama, your car, your house, and your spouse. That don't even matter because it's still a pagan holiday. If you are a pastor, he's See, suffers don't know better. So most I have mercy upon you because you don't have an understanding yet, but he'll, he'll help you get an understanding. But if you are a leader in any capacity, that you call yourself a leader, you are without excuse, and therefore you should repent. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we thank you for your compassion, and we thank you, Almighty Yah, for your loving kindness. I ask you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach to bless us today, to be with us today, to keep us today, to help us, Almighty Yah, to walk in your purpose, to walk in your favor, to walk in your strength. I pray, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, that you would touch every individual that's listening. Touch them and speak to them right where they are in their hearts. Help all of us to turn from our sins, to walk in righteousness, and to continue to grow in you. So we thank you and we magnify you in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Amen. Um, here you go. I need somebody to, 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 to share Hallelujah. So today, today is part four of our trusting in, in the provision of Yah. And, um, and, and, and so now today, for us to us for us to deal with trusting in Yah's provision, we're gonna deal with the issue of patience. We're gonna deal with the issue of patience. We're gonna deal with the issue of unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? So we can understand how to really trust in Yah's provision. Now, again, our foundation of the scripture. It's Genesis of Bereshit, Sheet, Genesis 22, uh, verses 1 through 18. And so now we're not going to read it, we're just going to give a review of it. And um, But you can go to the scriptures and read it for yourselves. That's Genesis 22, verses 1 through 18. And so in the, in the scripture, we find that the Most High was um, getting ready to, to test Abraham. He was not tempted Abraham because the scripture says that Yah does not tempt any man with evil. Right. And he can't be tempted as well. So, so, so you can't tip the most high Yah, and Yah does not put you in a position to fall. But Yah will allow your faith to be tried. Because the thing about it is, your faith has to hang on to or grab a hold of Yah's word. And if your faith can't hang on to or grab a hold, or grab a hold of Yah's word, then you may be in some trouble. So we see Abraham went to the place that Yah had showed it to him to go. And when Abraham had passed the test, but Abraham was willing to do what Yah had said to do without being reluctant, without hesitating to do it. Then the Most High said, you know what, Abraham, don't lay your hands on the land. He said, for I know you love me. And, Abraham, and, and the Most High provided himself a sacrifice when Abraham saw a ram in the thickets. You know, let, 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 let me say something to you about that. Yahushua says this. Yahushua says, he says that Abraham desired to see my day. And he saw it. So, what was what what was it that Abraham desired to see? He saw Yah's Yah's ram with his head in the thickest, with a crown of thorns on his head. And that same ram that Abraham saw caught up with them thorns on his head was the same ram that died in the place of his son. So Abraham desired to see Yahushua's day, and the Most High allowed him to see it by that ram. So he saw the provision of Yah in every way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he saw Yah's provision in every way. So Genesis 15, um, let, 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 let me help you all out. So Genesis 15 and verse 1 says this. It says, after these things, the word of Yahuwah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. Now listen, this was not a, this was not a Malachim that came to give a message to Abraham. This was the word of Yah. 
Who is the word of Yah? Yahushua. This is Yahushua in the Torah coming to Abram, telling him, don't fear, for I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And on top of that, when, 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 he, when he allowed Abram to fall into a deep sleep, after Abram had cut those animals in half and the blood ran down through the middle, the smoking pot walked through the blood. Abraham did and it. And there was a covenant made. And the same one that walked through the blood was the same one that spoke to Abraham and that was the word. Because the word understood that Israel was going to mess up. So what he did was put himself in a position to take over that punishment if the covenant was broken. See, Abraham then walked through the blood. The word did. So Yahushua HaMashiach died because of us breaking the covenant. Yeah, every, every stoning, every burn by fire, every uh, 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 death that, that, that was given to man from Yah, Yahushua took upon that death. And he said that to Abraham, I am your exceedingly great reward. Fear not. Well, how do you know he's the word? Well, let, 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 let's, let's go to John 1. Because I want to say something up, but I got to teach y'all something first. Well, John 1 says, in the beginning, let's read it in the right context so, 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 so the ones who want to challenge me can read it right. Because this is where you're going to offend a whole lot of y'all. We're going to kill the Trinity. Because that ain't no way in Scripture. There's some man, there's, there, 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 there's, there's some man made up. And if you go on the scripture, go and say, well, God's the Father. Well, his name wasn't God. So let's kill all that. Because his name was not God. His name, was, his name is Yahuwah. Some folks say Yahweh or Yahuwah. I pronounce it Yahuwah. His name was not God. And, and, and his son's name was not God the Son. His name was Yahushua. And even before I read this, let me ask you a question. If God died, if Yah died and went to hell for three days, then who was on the throne? Right. Because, because the throne was vacated if the Most High died. And first of all, the life giver don't die. He gives life. Right. There's no death in him. He is set apart. And the only reason he allowed his son to die is because all the sins of us went to the son. He became sins for us. So he had to die. But he died in faith. So John 1 says, in the beginning was the word. That same word came to Abraham in Genesis 15 and 1. The word. And the word was with Elohim. It was, it was what's supposed to be there. The word God is not Supposed to be there. The word God in the, in the Greek means theos. But guess what? It has the same meaning as, 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 as the word Elohim. It, it has the word magistrate. Because that's what it means. The Elohim is the plural word. It's the magistrates. There's more than one individual there. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. The word Elohim also means mighty ones. So in the beginning, the word was with Elohim, and the word or the word the word was with the mighty ones, and the word was a mighty one. And the same was with Elohim in the beginning. So when, so, so when Yahuwah spoke. The word out of obedience done what he said. That same word became flesh. It's the same word that, uh, that, 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 that let there be light based on the Father speaking. So I, so I, so I meant to say that. Because the scriptures out of most of us bring the scripture out of context. And we deceive people. And that's not good. It's not right. And so many people don't know Yah and don't know how to have faith in Yah because we present them wrong. And it's sad. So I'm, te I'm telling you that you leaders, whether you want to be a minister or whatever, teach the word of Yah right. 
Keep it in context. Read your Bible for real. Quit reading your Bible, go to somebody else's commentary, and get their opinion on what the word is saying. Read your word with prayer and with fasting and precept the scripture. It's a commandment by Yah for us to precept the scripture. And all the, the so-called New Testament scriptures, it should have some kind of backup in the Torah. Because the Torah is the foundation. But because of the lies of the adversary through these wicked men, they tell you lies to tell you you ain't got to follow the Torah. Because anybody that does not follow the Torah, even your prayers are an abomination. So if you don't believe in the Torah and you don't have faith, have faith in Yah's word, you're wasting your time. Yeah. And you definitely don't have a rule called I don't care how much you want to come to that old shade and dance. I'm telling the truth that there are some people who are doing things out of ignorance. So the Most High does have mercy. But they don't remain ignorant. They grow and come to the knowledge of the truth. But those who come to the truth and you reject it, you don't have a ruach. You got your flesh in the way. Right. And that's why your life is continuously falling. Because you trying to do it on your own. And so you don't walk by faith. And, and I'm prophesying. That's why I'm talking like I'm talking. Because this is the most high talking to you all. Most of us do not know how to have faith in Yah and trust in Yah's provision. Most of us do not know how to have patience. Somebody told somebody else a lie. And I heard the lie they told them. Here is the lie. The lie is do not pay for patience because you're going to start going through trials to get patience. That's a lie. If you look over your life before you came into Yah, before you pray for patience, guess what? You still went through trials and tests. Mm -hmm. Trials and tests don't come for you having patience or pray for patience. Trials and tests come for you just living life, period. Right. And why would Yah let patience be one of the fruits of the Ruach or the Spirit and you, and you don't pray for it? It makes no sense. Hebrews says, through faith and patience, one shall inherit the promise. So you got to wait upon y'all. Our problem is, when things don't come in the time we think it should come, we don't have it in the time we think it should happen or how it should happen, then we say, you know what? I miss y'all or you miss y'all. No, you in the flesh and you don't know how to be still. And what you are doing is leaning to your own understanding because you are dictating your circumstances around you, what is y'all not based on what you see. When the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight, it also says to trust in y'all with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. So when something good to you come to you or something bad come to you, you still need to pray and ask y'all so he can help you to discern right. what's him and what's not. And many of us, we run, we follow, we chase at the people who mean us no good, who don't know anything. And, and, and so, so I'm here today because, because, because we're going to break that stronghold. And I'm telling you that, that to trust in Yah's provision, you got to have patience. And you have to walk in, in forgiveness. So we're going to cover our Torah portion in this in this this morning. So this morning, we're dealing with we were dealing with Joseph, and Joseph, his brothers came. It was it was a famine in Egypt. Remember the story? Some of you all there was a famine in Egypt. Well, Joseph had got to sit down to part of his house. Well, Joseph was thrown into a pit and then sold as a slave and then went to prison. And all of this stuff happened to Joseph because it was a plan of Yah. And so many of us think we start going through things. See, the adversary is cunning and crafty. He's slick. Right. He's, also, he's also divisive. So his goal is to turn us against people. That's why we first, when we first get saved and come to salvation, man, they don't want to hear the name. Man, they don't want to talk to me. Man, they're going to see all they, them, who, 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 who? 
Man, they, they gonna talk about you. They don't wanna hear you say the name. People gonna leave you alone. People gonna run away. People gonna blase, blase, and people gonna skip in the woo. So here we are now, caught up and cannot do the will of Yah because we don't want to offend people. But let me explain something to you all clearly. That if you put your trust in people, you are already walking in the curse. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Curse is the man that puts his trust in a man. And allow what man says to, 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 to overrule what Yah says, your trust is in the one who you obey. Oh, that's heavy, ain't it? Because you, your, your trust cannot be in Yah if you're continuously walking around leaning to your own understanding. So Joseph, Joseph was in prison. He had came out as a slave. He, his brothers didn't like him because his daddy showed him favoritism. And Joseph, Joseph had his problems as well. But when he was going one day to check on his brothers, then all of a sudden, they jump on him. They, we're going we're gonna, to we're kill him. Reuben, who was, not, who was not a good leader or a true big brother, true leader or a good big brother, instead of him standing up and putting his life on the line like he should have and defending his brother, he cowered down a little bit. We're going to throw him into, you know, put him on in, in, in the pit. And, and, and in his plan, he had had where they leave to come and get him. But he never did do that, huh? He never did get him out, did he? He didn't tell his daddy neither that they had did this. He allowed it to happen. Joseph, Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold to slavery. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. He'd been gone for a long time. I think he was 47 years old when the daddy came back. 20 years, I think. He'd been gone for 20 years. Now, Joseph had a promise in the beginning. And, and so the scripture says that Joseph dreamed a dream. In his dream, he said the sun and the moon and the stars bowed down to him. He was telling his brother and father that, 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 that he had his sheaves and their sheaves. When they were tying the sheaves up, they were getting about the hills. That was a true word that was spoken from Yah to Joseph. But if Joseph would not have had faith if Joseph would not have gained understanding, then we would not be able to read the 45th chapter of Joseph. The way we read it. Genesis 45 and 1 says this, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, because every man, and called, he cried, caused every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians of the house, and, Pharaoh, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Now listen to this. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I'm Joseph. I'm Joseph. It's me, y'all. Not, not a teenager anymore. Right. Grown man. Grown man with two children. Two, I guess, good sized boys. Had a little strength on them. He, he had changed. It's been 20 years. He said, he says, he says, and Joseph said to his brother, I am Joseph. He said, I hire you, you'll see. Is that what he said? Or he said, I need. I am Joseph. Do if my father yet live? And the, the word says, and his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his prayer. Why, why was they troubled? Because of what had happened 20 years ago. Now, I understand this. Joseph, Joseph had been forgiven his brothers. But his thing is, he wanted to see if they had changed. But he learned something 
When he came through, it seems as if he came out with an understanding. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I'm happy to tell you that you gain an understanding by having patience. Because over time, you'll be able to see what Yah is saying while he revealed his word to you and his purpose for your life. He gives you the understanding as you pursue him. He allows you to be patient as you see him. So he said, I'm Joseph. The brother was scared. Hey, look here, man. What? Whoa. Because I'm pretty sure that everything that they had said or they had done had came up into their mind. Remember, when I was going down there, they looked for Joseph. They looked everywhere. He got a report of them looking for him. He brought him in and called them spies. Why were they looking for him? To see if he was still alive. Because they remember what they've done. Even if their father had given them instructions or, what, or whatever, he didn't know the whole story, but the brothers knew. The, bro the brothers knew. The, bro the brothers knew the entire story. The brothers knew. The brothers knew the entire story. They knew what they had done. They knew this. But now he's so he's, he, he tells them he's Joseph. And Joseph tell his brother, and Joseph said to his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. He held him accountable. He acknowledged what was done, but he wouldn't hold no bitterness into his heart. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither for Elohim did not send, for Elohim did send me before you to, to preserve life. Now one thing about Joseph, he could not have said this if he did not have an understanding of Yah and his purpose and if he did not have forgiveness in his heart. So you'll see through his trials and his tests, he was able to be able to trust Yah's provision. See, Yah spoke a word over his life. He didn't tell him what else he's going to go through. Just like all of us. The Most High speaks to our life. He don't tell you word for word, play by play, anything you want to encounter. He don't tell you that. He tell you how he see you in the end. He told Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to curse them that curse you. I'm going to bless them that bless you. He told Abraham that while him and Abraham both had to understand it, that Sarah was barren. The Most High don't speak to your life about your situation. He speaks to your life about his purpose. And when he talks to you, he don't, don't you get beside yourself and think that y'all does not understand what you go through. Y'all realize what you go through. He understood Gideon had a problem. Gideon probably was dealing with fear. You know, after all, he was in the wine press threshing wheat. He, he understood Moses' situation. Moses was not, you know, just on the backside of the desert feeding his father in law sheep. But you got to remember 40 years ago, he killed a man. He buried him in the sand. And he, he had escaped from Egypt. As a fugitive from justice, because Pharaoh wanted to take his life from him. Y'all understood that? He understood his purpose that he had for Isaac. He knew what he had for Jacob and Esau. He understood he, when he had told Sarah, he said, You got two nations in your, in your womb. And the older one going to serve the younger one. The Most High knows every dilemma. He knows every situation. He knows all about you. He is not concerned about your circumstances. As far as he ain't caught up on that. I'm not saying he don't care about it. I'm saying he's not caught up on it. It don't move him. It don't bother him. Because he knows his will for your life. Matter of fact, he told all of Israel one time. What did he tell all Israel? Well, in Jeremiah 29, Israel, because he was telling Israel, you know, really don't fight. 
Don't fight. Just go ahead and go peacefully. Because if you fight, you're going to die by the sword. It's going to be bad for you. But he told him this in verse 11 and 29, chapter of Jeremiah. He said, for I know the thoughts that I have, uh, or, or I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahuwah. Thoughts of shalom and not of evil. To give you an, an expected end. He told them this because he understood even though their disobedience, he was he he has to ask the loving father, discipline them, that he's not throwing them away. He's not just casting them off. But he does have to correct the things that's out of order. And this is his method. He will use Nebuchadnezzar. But he said, now look at him now, but I still know the thoughts I have towards you. I still know what I want to do in your life. So I'm telling you all today that Yah knows your, what you deal with. Right. He knows what you're going through. But he, he, above all that, he knows his word over your life. And for what I've heard him say, is that he honors his word above his name. So he, when his word is over your life, he puts his word on the line and he's not going to allow anybody or anything to make his word not come and pass in your life. The thing is, we have to believe, believe him. We have to trust in Yah's provision. And, 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 and in order to do that, y'all, we got to get out of man-made traditions, man-made religion. We got to get past our own carnal mindset and begin to earnestly, truly seek Yah. So the first thing we got to do, too, you know what we got to do, too, first, Michaela, is we got to get past the know-it-all stage. Mm -hmm. right, you know everything. True. You know every scripture to quote. But it's amazing how you know all kind of everything and your life is, is, is this is the feeling as the man who knows nothing. Right. Because knowing everything should make you prideful. Right. All of a sudden you got some knowledge. Now your head be. Because you fail to realize after knowing everything that knowledge puffs up. And you don't gain knowledge and understanding just for the benefit of yourself. It's for others as well, and it's given from Yah, so it ain't your knowledge you give it. It's the knowledge he's giving you to give to somebody else. But of course, again, to know everything, you'll never make it. In order to grow in this kingdom and take Yah's provision, you got to walk in the spirit of humility, and you got to have forgiveness in your heart. Joseph saw his brothers. He said, it's me, it's Joseph, I'm your brother. Is, is, is dad still alive? He understood where his brothers was at. The word said they were troubled when they saw him. It bothered them, it baffled them, it concerned them. It bothered them, it baffled them, it concerned them. Because, why? Because their brother was alive. Hallelujah, we got some difficult technical difficulties going on because people are writing one thing. Hallelujah. My computer. Oh, there I go. Ignore that. Excuse us. Hallelujah. So, so the thing is that he knew how his brother's heart was. He knew how they felt. Thank you. So that's why he was telling them, don't be angry. Don't be grieved. Yeah, you did what you did. You acted the way you act. And what you meant for evil, y'all meant it for good. And I'm not here at the hands of you. I'm not here in this place because you threw me into a pit. And I was so as a slave and went to prison. No, I'm here because Yah sent me ahead of you because he desired to save your life. And that's, uh, my family, is how we walk in, uh, in forgiveness. By understanding that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, even if people hurt us. Folk might
might do some things to you that's going to stunt you, that make, make you sit down and cross your legs. Mm -hmm. That'll make you want to come unravel, make you want to come unglue, make you want to get vengeance. Mm -hmm. They do. But that's how we got to grow in our faith to realize that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Right. We got to have an understanding that we don't fight against flesh and blood. No, that, 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 that's not why our fight is. And when we can realize that, we can sit back and discern to say, you know what? Even though I might be in this tough situation, it may be difficult for me. Still, let me pray about it because it may be Yah's will. If you ever read Jubilees and Jasher, when, 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 when Joseph was in prison and he asked the butler to get him out, the word says that it displeased Yah. And he allowed him to stand there a little while longer. Why? Because Joseph was trying to make his own way. He was trying to make his own way. He said to the butler, you know, I'm in here for nothing. I, I, I'm accused of something I didn't do. You know, when you get out of there, get me out of here. Remember me now. I look out for you. Look out for me. That's not walking by faith. That's you trying to make your own way. Because you find yourself in a place that you don't like yourself to be in. And so what we do is we find ourselves in places that we don't like. If we don't have faith, we become desperate. We start doing things, acting ways, saying stuff that we should not say because we don't trust the process. And not trusting y'all causes us to become bitter, mad at everybody. I'm mad at the world. Why? Because you hurt me. You tried to take my wife from me. You stole money from me. You, you broke in my house. We bring up everything in the world they've done right. to have an excuse to be mad. The problem with that is we neglect to understand everything that we've done. Right. And even if we've done stuff in our mind that's small, the one who do done it to, yeah. it may be great. Right. And you can't walk in faith and unforgiveness at the same time. You can't walk in faith and unforgiveness at the same time. You can't say that you trust in your provision but have no understanding. It, they, they all go hand in hand. Right. We learn how to sit down and be still. Joseph was 17 years old when he left. Of course in his heart, in his mind, he may not have that understanding but by, by the age of 47 years old, he understood yeah, you meant, you, you, you meant it for evil. But no, 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 no. Y'all sent me ahead of you because it was my job to save your life. So even though you did this to me, it wasn't you doing it. It was him behind the scenes making it happen. And even though I didn't like how it happened, he did it that way so I would stay. Because I'm pretty sure they would have told us, you know, going down to Egypt, he probably wouldn't have went. Right. <laughs> he probably would have took off walking and, and, and came around the back way and scooped around the other way and got on, got on back to the dad's house real quick. He probably would have made some kind of excuse not to do what they said to do to fit for his life. But the way it was done, he couldn't have came back. Right. He had to stay. He, had to stay. And he was put in a position to trust y'all. And many of us lives are like that. We got to learn how to start taking advantage of the opportunity and trust y'all in the process. Even when things happen to us that seems to be unjustly, when, when, when you begin to have things that happen in your life that seem to be not right, just be still and think about what will see to you over your life. And maybe you'll be able to grab hold of a word that was spoken. And that word that was spoken will enable you to go forward. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. So Hebrews you know, Aaron and Romans, they both talk about Abraham. And they, they talk about Abraham not considering his own body being dead. But one thing that's powerful is this right here. They say that Abraham was keeping with what he had been told. What was Abraham told? Well, when you look at Genesis 14, let's read it. Excuse me, Genesis 17. Genesis 17 and 1. Says this, I want I always have to read the first verse anyway. Says that and when Abram was in, when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am El Shaddai. 
Walk before men, be thou tall, mean, thou perfect. Behold. And the first thing that he spoke to Abraham before he made the covenant, he made him whole. And he made the covenant in the place where he was not holy at first. And he made that covenant and established it because that's where he made him whole at. He, he's, he made a covenant and then he caused him to become circumcised. That circumcision has a lot of meanings to it. But one thing it does, it shows exposure of your most vulnerable spots. So he said, walk before me and be thou tall mean, be whole. He said, I'll make, he said, I'll make a covenant between me and thee. And multiply thee exceedingly. And the word says, And Abram fell on his face, and Elohim talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, or Abraham, or Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Now look here. He told him, I have made you a father of many nations before he had a baby. Before the covenant was established. While he was still impotent in his mind. He gave him a word. I'll make, I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful. You're talking about, you're talking about a man who was impotent. You talking about a man whose life has showed up. A man that got old. A man, him and his wife have no more relations outside of this conversation and good friendship. So he's talking to a man from a whole different perspective than that man's circumstances show. And that man got a trust in the word. And he had, he, he, at that moment, he has to stop trusting in his circumstances. Abraham fell on his face. Abraham prayed. Abraham cried. In verse 15, he says in Genesis 17, and Elohim said unto Abraham, For Sarai, for as for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her, shall her name be, and I will bless her and give you thee a son also of her. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings. What was I at? And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. The word says Abraham fell on his face and laughed. <laughs> what? Because Abraham at that point, he laughed. He, it, there, there was a, a good laughter. Why was that? Because I'm impotent. Sarah, Sarah Barron. And I already got a son. So in Abraham's mind, he had already thought it was all good. Because right. he had a son already. Right. So I'm straight. And I can't have no more kids. And Sarah Barron. I guess that's why Solomon probably told us, don't leave your own understanding. By his understanding of the Torah. Right. And these men in the Torah who y'all spoke to. And when y'all had said things, it seemed to be ridiculous, but guess what it was still? It was the truth. Right. And we had to believe y'all's word in spite of it. And Abraham said unto, unto y'all, in, in verse uh, 18, he says, Oh, th that Ishmael may live before thee. And y'all's word, and y'all said, Sarah thy wife shall be shall bear a son indeed and you shall call his name Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So that's the word Abraham had. Abraham had that word. 
as Abraham was in his life, he was going from faith to faith, right. extreme to extreme, because he saw Isaac born. Mm -hmm. He saw Isaac grow. His faith was boosted. When he got to a point in his life, the last thing was, go kill him for me then. Now, now, my question to you all is this. If y'all has spoken to you and have given you a word and you all hunky-dory, you all had a duty, you're doing a splits, why all of a sudden now, when you're going through this trial, you forgot what was told to you last time? Because everything always springs off of one promise that was given to you because y'all is sure in this word and he knows what he's talking about when he said everything in Abraham's life, the pattern never changed. The promise from, from the beginning was, I'm going to bless you. Bless them who bless you. I am going to make you a father of many nations. All the earth is going to be blessed by your seed. That's the first thing that was told to him. It was reaffirmed to him in Genesis 15 when, 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 when the word of Yah came to Abraham. It was reaffirmed. And he told him, I'm going to give you a son. You will have a son from your own body. The Most High, when the Most High had told Abraham he was going to have a son from his own body, he wasn't telling him to go get with Hagar because Sarah had no children. He didn't even bring up Sarah. He was talking to him from a place that, 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 that Abraham was going to be impotent. So guess what? No matter how it looks, no matter how you feel or what you're going through, you're going to have a son from your own body. And that came to pass in the 17th chapter of Genesis because he was empty then. And guess what? He made him whole. And that word came to pass because he had a son from his own body with his wife. Right. Abraham allowed his wife to talk him out of what Yah had said by her telling him right. to go with Hagar. Like many of us do. When Yah gives us a word, we allow people who we deem credible, who we call to be close, to talk us out of what Yah has said, and you ought to stop that. Yeah. Just if you're a man of your house, you stand firm on what the word of Yah say. It matter what your wife tell you, or how angry she want to get, or upset she want to get. The most high deal with her, you remain obedient and let her get mad. <laughs> Vice versa. If, 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 if Yah speaks to you, woman, and he told you something, you obey Yah. What you mean? A woman can't do that. Well, let's, let's deal with it then. We're going to deal with that thing then. Let's, let's, let's look at Isaac and Rebecca. Because when you read the, 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 the extended biblical sources, Re Rebecca went to Shem, Abraham, then Abraham. They the ones who told, you know, her, you're going to have a son. And the, and the older one going to serve the younger one. Because of our lack of study, we think that, that, that Rebecca should not have helped Jacob. But when, when you read Jubilees and Jasher, it says, it says that Yah was behind the whole thing. Right. <laughs> it says that Yah caused Isaac not to discern he, uh, uh, Jacob. Right. That Yah was helping them. So don't give in your flesh. Yah spoke a word to Rebecca because she prayed to him and he told her that the older was going to serve the younger and that word had to come to pass. So what I'm telling you is woman or man that when Yah, I, 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 I don't mean your flesh. I don't mean your carnal mindset. I don't mean you. I'm telling you that when Yah speaks, we have the responsibility to stand on Yah's word. And, and, and guess what you all? We got to walk in, 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 in forgiveness. We got to walk in love. We got to walk in truth. We need to gain understanding. We need wisdom. We need to get past having a religious mindset and learn how to trust in Yah's provision. Our thing is, we don't trust in Yah's provision because we're so caught up on what we got going on. I got to have this. My money acting funny. Ain't nobody going to not. We got all kinds of excuses not to obey Yah because we're afraid to lose things. You should be afraid to lose y'all. Right. Jobs come and go. Friends come and go. All kind of houses come and go. Cars come and go. But man, you know what? You can lose another. You, 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 you can stand. You can lose a car. I don't want to lose mine, but you can get a nut. You can lose the house. I don't want to lose mine, but you can get a nut. But man, I wouldn't want to take that chance to lose y'all. Because you might not get that back. And so the best thing for you to do is humble yourself, 
under the mighty hand of Yah, resist the adversary, so he'll flee from you. Well, how do you humble yourself under Yah's hand? You surrender yourself. You deny your own self interest. You follow your faith. You pray. You cry out. You humble yourself. And he will make the adversary flee from you. What you mean then? Well, let's deal with Yahushua in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, he is a mighty one. He's a Yahid. He is the son of Yah. Yahushua is not Yah. Right. He is the son of Yah. I didn't say he want to save you the world. He is the savior. Right. He is the one that was sent to die on the behalf of us. Israel first. And then equally to, to, to the Greek. He is. He is not Yah. So, so when he was going to the garden, it, 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 let me say this before I even go any further. If Yahushua is Yah, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> because that's confusing to me. You know why? Because who was he praying to in the garden? <laughs> who was he praying to when he broke bread? <laughs> that's deception. Right. And why would he hide something that big if he's Yah? He'll tell you he's Yah. He ain't about nothing else. Right. He says he's the son of Yah. That's what the Bible says. Matthew 3 says that Yah spoke from the heaven and he was at mercy. This is my son. Yeah. <laughs> John 3 says, For Yah so loved the world that he sent. He sent. Now he came to the world as his son. <laughs> he sent. He's because of, oh, oh they go use 2 Timothy 3 16. Where is the mystery of godliness? Mm -hmm. It's an Elohim, not God. Elohim was manifest in the flesh, the mighty one. Yahushua. Oh, Philippe is too far. He thought not Robert would be equal with God. I would say Elohim. He was a magistrate. He had authority. Listen, he's a king of kings. Even though, even though, even though there was a Pharaoh, Joseph was still the king of Egypt. So how can things change? Because the because Yah is Yah don't mean Yahushua can't be king. Yah made him king. He the king of kings. <laughs> but Yah is still the father. Right. And Yahushua sits at the right hand of Yah. Ever interceding on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So what was I here? Uh, Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac and Rebecca. It, it was Yah's will. The thing is that we don't want to take heed to the word of Yah. And so here we are now living our life all kind of ways. The most I rebuke you for living a, a, a wayward life. It's, it, huh? Yeah, he's in the garden of Gethsemane. He humbled himself under the mighty hands of Yah. How did he do that? Because he fell on his face and he prayed. He denied his own self-interest. He asked Yah, if it's at all possible... This cup passed. But then he said, in, in full obedience and surrendering himself, nevertheless, not my will, but that, that, that your will be done. You know, you may have to go through some things before you are able to get a nevertheless to come into your life. And you may not have to. You just should be obedient and say, nevertheless. Don't lean. Because your hoosh in his mind, he probably could have saw another way. But guess what? To walk by faith, you don't do it your way. The most high is no respect of persons. Nobody's exempt. You do his will and not your will. Like you used to pray in, in, in Matthew 6. He said, let your will be done. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed or Kodesh be your name. Right? He says, let your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, he taught us to pray for Yah's will to be done. So why would he himself not want to humble himself and walk in Yah's will? Why would he tell us to, to say no to our own self-interest and follow him if he couldn't say no to his own self-interest? So he had an understanding that sometimes your carnal mind or your flesh will get in the way of you obeying Yah. And he showed us the way to deny your own flesh, get out your flesh, get out your carnal mindset. It's to pray, humble yourself. Yield yourself and be still. So a lot of things here, see, Yahushua wasn't going by how he felt. Right. He, said, he, he said, my soul is heavy. His soul being heavy is how he felt. He felt burdened down. 
He felt despondent. He felt all kinds of stuff going down, going through his heart. But then you know what he said? He said, y'all wait here and watch for me. And instead of him leaving them in the garden, taking off, running, hiding himself, he went a little further into the garden and he fell on his face. How many of y'all can trust y'all's provision? You know, most of us go through trials and tests, we complain, we want to quit, we want to stop, we want to get drunk, we want to get high, we want to just stop it. Why? Because we don't trust in y'all's provision. It gets too hard for you. But let me explain something to you, though. The way with transgressing is hard. Yeah. If you ain't on transgressing, it ain't hard. It's called trials and tests. Yeah. Most of us, many, many of us, have taken, have taken stands and lost a lot of stuff to trust in y'all. You know, and y'all has provided. You know, I have lost a lot of things and I still have not skipped a beat. Not one time because my faith is in the most high y'all. And y'all would not suffer his people to be put to, to, put to shame. Let's go to Proverbs 10. Excuse me, hallelujah. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10 says this. 10 and 3 says this. It says, Yahuwah will not suffer the soul of the righteous to, to famish. The word famish. What does that mean then? That he won't suffer your soul. He won't suffer you to go hungry or to hunger. To starve. No, he provides. Yah's word is true even if we tell the lie. Yah provides. He does not let down his children. He does not forsake his children. It don't mean his children won't go through trials. It don't mean they won't encounter tests. It means that every affliction you go through, he brings you out. So we be patient and we trust in Yah. We wait on Yah. We don't jump, jump the gun, take off running. You know, me, you know, you know, you know what cowards do? Yeah. They kill or get killed. Oh, yeah. A coward will shoot you in the back. Cause he's scared of you. You'll come trying to confront him, he'll drive down and shoot you anyway. Cause he's scared of you. Or he'll run from you. Because he's scared of you. And have no understanding of why he's running. And many of us are the same way. We're cows in the, in, in the Ruach. We run from things. We hide. We duck and dodge. We attack. We say things we should not say. All because we misunderstand and don't like what we're going through. And most of the time, we've never prayed about it. And I'm telling you, out of 24 years, you know, of, 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 of having salvation, that every time I went through a trial and I always had a pity party, I've always cried and I did not pray, I have never got delivered. Never came out of it. Right. Never had a breakthrough. Never had a little Why? Because I didn't believe y'all could. Right. Instead of me going to y'all to, to ask y'all to help me pay my, 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 my house door, I went to community action. Mm -hmm. I went to a friend. I went somewhere trying to borrow some money instead of praying, asking y'all to open that door and to help me. And here I did find myself worse off than I was the first time. You know, needed money this years ago. But needing money and time passed for gas. And instead of me being a man, here we are floating checks. What they call floating checks. Mm -hmm. Write a check for $20 for gas and the check bounce you pay $25 for. Mm -hmm. And, when it, and then if, you, if you can't pay the $50 for that gas, then you got to pay $200 something for it because that goes to DA. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pay in that time frame, you go to jail, what they call IWC. Issuing worthless checks. All because we don't have faith in y'all. Need some money to pay a bill. We fall down. And, 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 no, no, excuse me. We run outside, get a blank check, go to the check advance place, and try to get a check for $500 you got to go to every two weeks or every week to pay back that money. You pay $87 in interest on a floating check that y'all didn't tell you to do. Why? Because that's all called, called a lack of faith. And that's what we've done. Men and women... Husbands and wives be, lack faith. I'm telling you the truth now. Let's talk about it again. You got a husband, you got a wife, and everybody's supposed to be loving y'all. Mm -hmm. But as soon as that husband gets mad, he come unglued. <laughs> Talk crazy, want to call a woman out of her name, and then she's submissive and she's obedient. She love y'all. 
until her husband get, get on her nerves. She forgets she's supposed to respect her husband then. She started calling him weak, wimp, and a wimp. Weak, willing, and wimp. Because why? Because she don't have enough faith to be obedient. See, faith is more than you just asking y'all to give you a car or a house. Right. It's you obeying his word in every way. Most don't have enough faith to have forgiveness because somebody just hurt us too bad. Oh, my heart is broke. But at the same time, you hurt somebody. But in your mind, well, I ain't done that. Like, I, I ain't doing them like that. How do you know how you make anybody feel? You don't have my heart. You don't have my mind. You don't have my feelings. You don't know how you made me feel. Unless I tell you how you made me feel. And when I tell you how you made me feel, respect me. Our problem is that we didn't want to get us. They hurt my feelings. I don't want to go around no more. I don't want to see them no more. I'm tired of looking at them. But whoa, 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 whoa. What have you done? What have you said? How have you acted? See, we walk in all these matters of the flesh. We walk all, all throughout the flesh. Man, even when it comes to fornication. We got all kind of lame excuses from fornication to masturbation to pornography. And we're going to talk about it because most of y'all on this Zoom probably or, or, or this YouTube watch porn or, 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 or masturbate, you know, or, or, or you're a fornicator or you are an adulterer. Somebody done done something wrong on this thing. And you sitting here talking about, I can't get a living. That's one of the hardest things. You a liar. Hold on, wait a minute now. So you mean to tell me. And most I got to fight harder for some demons than others. Well, according to the scripture, he speaks a word and it happens. So he ain't got to fight nothing. All he got to do is speak a word. And if he has told you that you are delivered, then guess what you got to do? Walk in faith in that deliverance. So then, therefore, when you are tempted to fornicate, when you are tempted, you know, to masturbate, when you are tempted to watch porn, then you got to understand the word says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. Yeah, because when he overcome that thing. Yeah, he receives the crown of life. You don't want to receive death? Don't fall. See, our problem is we want to put the word up for some things and don't want to use it for all things. Right. But if you want to trust in Yah, trust you got to trust him all the way. And you got to just get on out there. If you don't know how to do it, ask him to help you. One thing about Yah is he will give you wisdom. He will give you wisdom how to overcome a temptation. He will give you wisdom how to overcome a trial. All we got to do is adhere to it, take heed to it, and begin to walk out what he said. Instead of saying, you know what, well, I can't do it. Just like the man that had been lame for 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. That, you know, who should go to that man and ask that man? He said, will you be made whole? The first thing the man said, the man, the man didn't say, yeah. He said, I need to be. The man said, you know what, well, you know, every time of the year, when the water be trouble, when the angel come around here, every time of the year, Somebody getting there before I do. That ain't what he asked you. He ain't asked you who was first. He ain't asked you who got in there for you. He asked you, will you be made whole? And when you read the story, the man had sin to be in that condition. And he was in there for 38 years. And our problem is that the, the Messiah asking us, do you want to be made whole? Will you be made whole? Do you want me to restore your marriage? Do you want me to help your finances? Do you want me to bless your life? We say, well, you know what, y'all yeah, do, but she's talking too much. He get on there. No, that ain't what I asked you. Do you want me to make you whole? Just say, yeah. Get up and take up your bed and walk. Take the thing you're laying on and put it on your back and go put it somewhere else. Quit laying here in the same spot. Wait on your deliverance. You laying here, waiting for somebody to put you in. You laying here, waiting on me to move. Now, how about you walk by faith and not by sight? Even though the man couldn't move his legs, I guarantee you the man had strong enough arms. Right. He could have pulled himself on up there. 38 years in the same spot? You been in the same spot 38 years. Man, no, no, no. You want to have faith, you got to have the same kind of mindset that the woman had with the issue of blood. Right. She had got to the point of her life, she didn't care about being trampled on she wasn't worried about who going to step on her. You got to remember, she had an issue of blood. She was unclean. She had no business, even in the crowd or even in the camp. But you know what? At times, you got to get past having no business and seek y'all. See, the thing is just right here. You who should have them ZZs on it? Some of the words say the hem of his garment. But it was actually called the Zit Zit or the Zit Zoys. The Zit Zit, numbers 15. With a strength of blue that puts you in remembrance of the commands of Yah. And in her heart, she said, if I could just touch the commands of Yah, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I can get to the commands of Yah, I can be made whole. She put herself in harm's way. 
She began to press her way through. Even in her body being weak, probably couldn't stand up, probably had an odor by herself, her blood stink. She probably had all kinds of things going on, but what she did was she pressed her way through, and you could tell there was a whole lot in the crowd. Because they were strong, and they were strong in Yahushua. It was all around while he was walking. But she probably almost got stepped on, hit a duck and dodge through. But once she got to the commands of Yah, once she grabbed the hole of the garments, she was immediately made whole. The blood, the uncleanliness, it, it, it dried immediately. Messiah turned around who touched me? Who, who put their hands on me? Somebody touched me, and they said, who you talking about? All the folks around you. But the woman couldn't keep it with herself. She said, I did it. She turned all she had been through. He kept what he told her. It's your faith that made you whole. It was her faith that caused her to push on through that. It was her faith that caused her to keep on walking. Oh, but then some of y'all may be like the man, the man in Mark 9 chapter. The man came to Yahushua when he came out to the mountain. What, what, what's going on? That's what Yahushua said. What, what, what's going on? What's happening? The man come to him and said, you know, you know, I brought my son down here to your, to your disciples. And your disciples couldn't hear my son. Yahushua told the man, you faithless. Oh, faithless generation. He was not talking about the, the Talmudim. He was talking about the people. You got to remember, the disciples had already been casting out devils. It wasn't them, it was the man. So the Messiah started talking to him. Well, how long has it been like this? How, when did it happen? And while they were talking, the boy began to have seizures. He began to seize up then and shake and quake while he was in the scene, while his father was in the scene or praying or talking or conversating with the Messiah. And he said, you know what? You can heal him if you will. You know, if, if, if you want to, if you will, you can heal him if you want to. And he said, what do you mean I will? He said, I can do it. He said, all things are possible to him that has faith, to him that believes, and the man that come to terms with himself. He told him, Mashiach. He said, I believe you can do anything. But here my unbelief. I believe it. He probably was telling him, I believe it as long as it looks right around me. But when the trouble rises, when it gets uh, rough, when it seems like it ain't going to happen, I struggle in the air. Why? Because I walk by what I'm looking at. Instead of what you're what you, what you saying. His honesty is what made Yahushua heal his son. See, if we're going to trust in Yah's provision, let's trust in Yah's provision. It was never ever told to us to know all things. But it was told to us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of Yah. It was told to us that men should always pray so they won't lose heart. It was told to us we can come upon him in a time of trouble. It was told to us that he won't respond to broken heart and the country spirit. It was told to us through fasting and prayer things come out. See, all that was told to us, and those are the things that we don't do. No, 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 we don't do that stuff. No, 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 we want to run around and go, and go cry. We want to run around and, 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 and we, want, we want to stop. We, 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 we want to boo-hoo all that and stay in the same place, waddle, and, I, and, and have a pity party. Damn. But let me tell you something right here. When you look at the scriptures, I've been looking into them a little differently lately. Most of them opened my heart up to allow me to see some stuff. And he, you all the same way. And I've never seen a prophet not stand bold before anybody when they spoke. They trusted Yah. They spoke. Even when it came down to their life, I've never seen Abraham cower down. I've never seen anyone in the scriptures that followed Yah cower down. They all stood up. They obeyed Yah. Hebrews 11 says some of them even died without even receiving the promise. They kept on persevering and walking with, with the word coming, with, with, with the word spoken over their life. Even Joseph. Joseph had some old stuff that had to be spoken over to the kids. What you mean? Well, Joseph told them when he died. Take his bones out of Egypt. He died a couple of hundred years old, but when you read Exodus, guess what? They took his bones with him out of Egypt. Why? Because he's spoken in faith, and somebody else caught a hold of his faith, probably hearing his story. Right. Probably understanding my great uncle, Joseph. He did this. I want to know the Yah of Elohim, the, the, the Yah of Joseph, just like Joseph wants to know the God, the Elohim of Isaac or Jacob or Abraham, or Eber, or Shem, or Noah. Why? Because they heard about this mighty father that brings deliverance. There's a set apart one that loves. And I'm going to tell you something. From that time to this time, Yah has never changed. Yah is the same. Malachi 3 and what? 6. Six. So he changes not. He's the same Yesterday, 
today and forevermore. The same Elohim, the same Yah can help your life. The same Yah can be there for you. Why don't you try him? Try him. Stop trying the devil. Stop trying your job. Stop trying everything and everybody else. Stop putting your confidence in the flesh and put your trust in the most high Yah. So praise Yah. Hallelujah. So I'm done. Hallelujah. So we get Pastor Cameron to, to come here and give, give you announcements after I pray. Hallelujah. But I pray that you all, you know, be blessed and trust in Yah. You know, you know, you know, you know what? Most of us walk around depressed because of lack of trust. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying things won't come in your life to try to get you to be depressed. Because things do try to rise to make us be depressed, make us feel despondent. But even in all of that, we have to put our faith, our trust in Yah, and know that he will bring us through. He will give us strength. He will give us comfort. Stop worrying about what's going to come tomorrow and put your focus on today. Tomorrow got enough troubles of its own. The Bible tells you that you live for this day. Tomorrow ain't even promising. Here you is worried about something you ain't even seen yet and you may not get to. But put your trust on today and put your focus on Yah. Believe that he will make a way for you. Surrender yourself. Let Yah speak to your heart like Yahushua yeah, spoke to, to, to Nathaniel under the tree and said he saw him before Philip came. Or like Yah spoke to Abraham. Let Yah speak to your heart. I refuse to be here and speak on, 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 on this live, on this Zoom, and here, and y'all here, you're not hearing the word of Yah? Then let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this to you real quick. If you hear us speaking the word, and it's not Yah, and you're not being fed, you may need to go somewhere else. <laughs> because we can't help you. And I, and, and, and I refuse to believe that Yah can't help anybody. Yah's word does not ever return void. The problem is the person. You're walking in disobedience. It's people that's probably looking or going to hear that need to be given. You don't even give. You don't even give your tithe or your offering. It's supposed to need to submit to somebody to have a leader. And you're so rebellious and stubborn, you can't even submit yourself because you care about what everybody else thinks. It's some of y'all who know the truth. You need to come out of what you're in and, go, and, and come to the truth. And you won't even do it because you want to make nobody mad. Shame on you. And may y'all deal with you for not turning yourself from that and coming to him truly because you have no excuse. If he said you, you can't, you need to stop quoting 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Talking about Yah ain't giving you spirit of fear, and you ain't walking scared. You better see yourself up, be a, a person of Yah, strong in Him. Mm -hmm. So praise Yah, Hallelujah, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. I thank you, and I magnify you, and I ask you, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, if you would just help us, help us to live for you, help us to to to, to walk to walk in your ways, Almighty Yah, to 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 obey your Torah, to do what you have commanded us to do. Help us never ever to get beside ourselves by walking in the flesh. But teach us your ways, oh God. We understand that we that, that many of us are on different levels of comprehension as, as your people. But you can help all of us to grow into the mature person. You can help all of us to grow into the person that depends upon you. So I'm asking you, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, help us to grow, to grow in your faith, to trust your provision, to live a set-apart life, to not live in sin. Teach us, Almighty Yah, to love our neighbor, to love our enemy. Teach us, Almighty Yah, to be obedient to your Torah. Teach us your ways, Almighty Yah. We surrender. Help us in the areas that we are weak in. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Help us, Almighty Yah, to be able to come out of uh, uh, a carnal mindset and walk in righteousness. We thank you and we just magnify you. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So, um, we we'll going to get past, past, past lady, lady Battle. Um, She's going to come and give announcements and uh, what we got going on. And um, We love everybody. We love all y'all. We love all y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, you come on, baby. We, we, we love all y'all. She, she coming. Hallelujah. But we love everybody. You know, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm flowing by the rule so I'm going to keep talking while she's coming. You can come on. But the thing is this right here. You know, the most high is frustrated. And some of you people who's wishy washy, mm. you vacillate because you're led more by your spirit, excuse me, by your feelings than the spirit of Yah. You say Yah let you somewhere, and the moment you get mad, you leave. You in your flesh because Yah don't move like that. 
You can't show me in the scriptures that Yah took somebody to move somewhere else because they got mad. Yahushua didn't want to die. He prayed about it. It was still the will of Yah. So you need to die, deny your own self-interest and get in Yah's will. Right now, your life will never get right until you're in the will of Yah. Mm. Because that's the problem. We want to have some of these lame excuses. Let me explain something to you. Little children get spanked by their parents when they disobey. What makes you think Yah won't spank you for disobeying? Surrender yourself. Quit pouting. Get your lip in and, and, and stand yourself up and humble yourself before the most, most high and walk how Yah commands you to walk. It's frustrating to see people who don't want to do what's right. Yeah. It's frustrating to see people who don't want to live right. People who want to always complain. When the word says do everything without murmuring or complaining. Because it's Yah that works in you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. And here are y'all murmuring and complaining. No, it's time out for that. How about getting on your face and you praying? You asking Yah to show you, to help you. Help me, Almighty Yah, not lean to my own understanding. Help me, Almighty Yah, to surrender myself. And then guess what? And then, then and let Yah give you the sermon to guide your life. Don't get an ultimate sermon with Yah. We know what Yah. If it's you, then do this. Because he probably ain't going to do that. Yeah. If it's you, then Yah, take me that way. He probably ain't going to do that. But if it's you, y'all, then give me the discernment to understand the difference between you and my flesh and the adversary. And more than likely, he'll do that because he brings his word to remembrance. So you all be blessed. You stay strong in y'all. And get out your flesh. Grow yourself up. And do what's right from the most high perspective. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. For the word that came right. forth today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we, we live in contrary to y'all's word. Um, yeah, we got religion. Yeah, we got good old fashioned religion. Yeah, that's called bondage. Good old fashioned Baptist. You can't let go to the Baptist. You're going to go to hell being a Baptist then. The most I tell you on the Shabbat, he didn't tell you to get on the, on the, on the denomination, Church of God in Christ. Is, 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 is Church of God in Christ false? Church of Christ, false. Baptist, false. Methodist, false. Catholic, false. Anybody that do not honor y'all's word is false. I don't care how many homosexuals you got because they got the same good and play a good, a good piano. If you don't understand the Shabbat, you don't love y'all. Right. You love yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking to the ones who know better. But I'm telling every, denom every denomination and every head of these denominations, every single pastor that's in these, in these ministries listening, you false because you should know better, pastor. How you how you know the honor of the Shabbat? I heard too many weak pastors tell me, "Oh, you doing you doing the right battle? We can't do it like that. We got no, you lying. You fearful, and you don't want to do what's right because you're scared to lose folks. When when when, when a Hava Love ministry began on Shabbat, we lost everybody except my family. We still kept telling the truth, didn't hold no grudges. So what's there between me and you? Oh, who is your trust in? The people giving you money or y'all provide for you. Right. Because why would you honor Christmas and Thanksgiving when they're pagan? But you won't even do the feast days. Come on, they, they the Jewish feast. That's so stupid. Read your Bible. The scripture says these are the feast of Yah. They ain't got to do no Jewish folks. And those, those so-called Jewish folks over there in Israel, they ain't even the two Jews. You, he, he, he go to so-called African-American man. He in Israel, but he calls himself a nigga. They ain't even who you are. It's a byword. Repent of the curse. Ask y'all to forgive you. Come to the truth. Honor y'all Shabbat, his Sabbath. I heard men get on YouTube and, and, and joke on us to put us down for saying Shabbat. How foolish of that man. He don't even know Hebrew to say something like that. The Hebrew word for Sabbath is Shabbat. And guess what? I can read Hebrew. I can show it to you just to help you, help you see it since you don't know it well. <laughs> Don't even want to honor Shabbat. Don't even want to honor the feast days. Wow. I want to know, have you really, how, have you really read your Bible? Because there's no way you're going to read the Bible and have that same kind of mindset. Hallelujah. When the word of Yah tells us that he, Yahushua has redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, he wasn't calling the, the Torah curse. He said about the, the curse of the Torah. That's death. Right. Yes. He's redeemed you from death by coming to give you life. 
and that more abundantly. I got friends. My friend. I love you, my friend. I love you, my friend. But if you get offended, you have to be offended. I got a friend. One of you quit trying to train your horses on Saturday. Because you got to have that money. <laughs> that ain't y'all. That's your flesh. Now I'm being real because the thing about it is most of us can't even do what's right from y'all perspective because we want to get this money. You can't, you can't serve y'all and, and money. Amen. You're going to love one and hate the other or despise the other. Yes. But see, everybody, everybody don't care. Some of y'all care about losing friends. I don't care if any of y'all want from me. I'm going to still tell the truth. Because guess what? I love you enough and love y'all enough to be honest with you and tell you the truth. Even if you're mad at me. Because I care about your soul Hallelujah. more than my pockets. <laughs> Praise y'all. And I don't need y'all to give me no money. I know how to work. <laughs> you obey y'all. And let him lead you. But get out your flesh and grow yourself up. Man and a woman. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, and then Pastor Battle walked away and tagged me. Oh, oh. Huh. <laughs> oh, praises to Abba. And, and, and as he was speaking, came to mind, and Yeshua said that he was told that your mother and your brother are calling for you. Who is my mother and my brother? Who is my mother and my brother? Those who do the will of my father. And you cannot separate the Torah from the prophet, or which you can't se separate the Torah from the considered the New Testament or the good news and the gospel. They all inclusive. It's one big bundle. And as he said, and as I stand with him on that, we'll lose all and forsake all because we're going to pursue the kingdom of Yah. And with that being said, they do walk away from you. We will receive persecution. But Yahushua said it will be given all back with what? A hundredfold. A hundredfold. Less. And we're willing to go through it. Still have persecution. We're willing to go through it. <laughs> we're willing to go through it. And I'm willing to take that stand. Mm -hmm. Because now that I have an understanding of who I am and whose I am, I understand that there's a knowledge truly above college. It was <clears throat> We, we kind of gleaned that from someone we heard. But I... Have an understanding that my understanding is not of my own. It's this of this scripture, this Torah, this law that the Father has provided. And he has prophets, men and women of Yah, sounding the alarm. Those who truly do adhere to the Torah. Hallelujah. And it, you, can't, you can't have one without the other. They make brown rice, white rice. You can't separate the color from it. We got Yahushua that is a card with the Father. And then you got the working of his Ruach that all come in one. And today, the spirit of truth have come to you. Through word, through teaching, it came to make you free. We've been bound, people of y'all. Bound, people of y'all. Because we've been told lies. We believe lies because we don't dig. We believe lies because we probably don't have the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of Yah within us to help us to discern the truth from lies. So today as Pastor Battle touched me <laughs> and just kind of ping me in a Ruach HaKodesh being stirred up within us. Today, we all in. There's a a uh, 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 gospel rapper, his name uh, Flame, and one of the one of the songs he said, "We got on our, you know, poker face. We all in, you know, we in till the game over." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with that being said, we don't trust in man's provision. We don't trust in the provision or the resources of our jobs. But we trust in the provision of Yah. And we do that through faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with that being said, as we stir it up now, who be your family? Who be your family, uh, uh, Ahava Love, people of Yah? Who your family? Yeah. Those who do the will of my Father. So we all in. You got any questions? Got any concerns? You can reach us by way of... A messenger, you can reach us through email, all just about all of social media platforms out there. Reach us, contact us, and we're willing to talk, we're willing to chat, but we will not compromise the truth of the word. Hallelujah! 
So with that being said, praise Abba for all those that tuned in and will tune in later. Go back and I always admonish us and encourage you to press rewind because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of Yah. Not a man, not a people. The word of Yah. So go press rewind. Go press replay. Study the words. Ask questions. Write down notes. Come into the truth of the word. Be free, people of Yah. If you are uh, desiring to give on today, in the comments, you 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 see um, we have specific places uh, and setups for you to give. We welcome those that, that want to give their tithes, uh, give a particular offering just to sow. So all praises to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Last thing we will say, this is the day that our father has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it because we love the lie we love not lies we are lovers of truth and we're walking in the provision of yah by faith see you next shabbat hallelujah enjoy your family love with the love of yah show true ahava hallelujah see you soon